Tommy, today's drag race could officially be called the past versus the future because we're drag racing a Porsche Cayenne Turbo versus a Tesla Model X. So what's your Porsche Turbo zero to 60 time? Well, my Cayenne Turbo is seven years old, but back in the day, Porsche said zero to 60 in 4.4 seconds. What about you? Well, Tesla says zero to 60 for the Model X in 4.4 seconds, hmm. but there's a catch. The catch is that while Tesla won't admit this, in order to get the fastest 0 to 60 time in this vehicle, you have to be in the lowest suspension setting, which is a little bit weird. But Tommy also has a problem. I actually have a couple problems because we are over 5,000 feet above sea level here in Colorado, which means the engine is certainly not producing what it can make at sea level. I also have 120,000 miles on this Cayenne Turbo and seven years of age, so that's certainly not gonna help things, but what's under the hood of the Tesla, Dad? Under the hood of the Model X is, of course, a frunk, and that's because it's an electric car, and it has batteries instead of pistons. It also has two electric motors, which means it's all-wheel drive, and Tesla doesn't officially state the horsepower or the torque numbers, but the best guess out there on the internet is that it has about 500 horsepower. So, I wonder what's under the hood of the Cayenne. This 2012 Cayenne Turbo has a 4.8 liter V8 with two turbos strapped onto it. Now, Porsche says it develops 500 horsepower and 516 pound-feet of torque. Now, unlike the Tesla that has really one gear, this car has eight with, of course, all-wheel drive. So at this point, Tommy, you may be wondering, why does the Tesla get faster when you lower it? And the internet say that it's because the angle of the CV joint, it gets straighter as it goes down more. But let's do two races. The first one, I'll be in regular height, which is where we drive it. Yep. The way you would normally drive. Uh -huh. uh, and then the second race, I'll lower it to its very low setting and see if it actually gets faster. Okay, and then I'm just gonna give it the beans in the Porsche. Hey, do you have launch control? Uh, I do not, no. So I've checked the manual, I've checked the interwebs. Um, it's kind of hard to launch the Porsche. You really have to hold the torque converter super high, but... Turbo spooling up. Ooh, it didn't like that. One more question. Yeah. Are you gonna use ludicrous mode? Ah, yeah, that's the thing. This isn't the performance. Right. So there's no ludicrous mode. It's just mash the throttle and hang on. So I don't have ludicrous mode, but I just want to show you what mode I am in. Acceleration is in standard. Steering mode is in sport, of course. Regen doesn't really matter in standard. And none of these are turned on because that would slow the vehicle down. So range mode isn't on. And then in terms of battery, let me show you what the battery state is. I charged it completely, so I'm at 300 miles of range, or almost full. I had to use some energy to get here. And then finally, the part that is always tricky is the suspension. So first, I'm gonna start in standard mode, and then in the second race, I'm gonna click it down to very low mode, which should be faster. Now, Tesla doesn't say that it's faster, but we found that that's what happens, so that's what I'll try. On both these runs, I'm just gonna do something very similar. I'm gonna put the car into drive, push the sport button, hold the brake, mash the throttle, and then let go of the brake because that's how people on the internet say to launch this vehicle. Now, of course, this car is old. It's driven around the earth the equivalent of like 4.8 times, so I'd be super curious to see how a new turbo would do compared to the Model X. And there's even a faster version now, the Porsche Cayenne Turbo S E Hybrid, which Porsche says will do zero to 60 in 3.6 seconds, so maybe one day we'll be able to test that out here. All right, race number one, I am in my standard suspension mode. And the reason for that is that's what I drive around in. So if you were to pull up to a stoplight and really want to take off, that'd be the place I would be at normally. Now, keep in mind, this car is heavy. We weighed it 5,400 pounds, and that is one disadvantage. We have been doing zero to 60 testing for about nine years now. And at a mile above sea level cars, with internal combustion engines are typically half a second to about a second slower, even with turbocharging. Now this car, is seven years old with 117,000 miles. I've never done a zero to 60 on it, but I can tell you what, it doesn't feel anywhere near a 4.4 second car. But then again, I've never brake torqued the heck out of it. Electric cars have one huge advantage and that is instant torque. So you get 
think all the torque at one revolution. Tommy, on the other hand, has to spool up his twin turbo V8 to ideal launch mode. And uh, yeah, he's got a little bit harder job to do. All I do is just not even hold the brake down. All I do is just floor it. What the hell? That's so fast! Oh, he took off faster. He's got me. Holy frick! But I'm catching up. Unbelievable! Woohoo! Uh, 5.64. Wow, that's a fast launch. You had me on the launch, and I think I was starting to catch up just a little bit. Did you floor it? Uh huh. Yeah, of course. I had my foot through the firewall. Huh. Yeah. Okay, well, let's do it again. I think I can get this faster. Well, you're going to have to because I'm going to lower the suspension. Oh, boy. You too can come out here and see how fast your car is. Just visit IMI Motorsports by clicking on the link below to rent the track or perhaps to go rent the motocross course and have a little bit of fun in the dirt. All right, race number two, and I'm going to lower my suspension. And according to the forums, what that does is it makes the CV joint and half shaft at the same angle to the motor, so it allows a Tesla to actually accelerate faster because the software then doesn't curtail the amount of power going to the wheel. At least that's what the forums say. So you know, imagine this is the wheel, imagine this is the wheel, and then this is the half shaft. Normally it's like that because the car is higher and when you lower it, it does that and gives it a nice straight angle. So let's do that right now. Okay, round two, so same thing. I was really impressed with that launch. The one to two gear change feels a little slow. I'm wondering if like 117,000 miles hasn't slowed the, uh, the transmission down a little bit, but this time I've turned traction control off as well. All right, race number two. And if you guys are wondering, I use two miles of range in that drag race. So it does use quite a bit of power. Turbo spooling up. Oh, it didn't like that. Okay, spooled it too high apparently. Try it again. Oh, good launch. You still got to jump on me. But the Model X is coming. Oh, it passed me. <laughs> you got a shift. much better brakes. You won that one for sure. Yeah, you had to shift. I did, I did have to shift. I was doing pretty good off the launch. That was a little slower for me, 5.74. All right, you know what we should do? What? Since this doesn't heat soak, what? you should do a zero to 60 run in this car just to find out how fast it is from zero to 60, because I weigh about twice as much as you do. No, you weigh 70 pounds more, but we'll no. see. Yeah, all right, all right, let's go, let's go do that. All right, zero to 60 mile an hour test in the Tesla Model X. This of course is just the long range or as it used to be called the 100D. So suspension is in very low, uh, adaptive suspension dampening is in sport, driving is in sport just like my dad had it, acceleration is in standard, range mode is off, battery is as charged as we could get it because we did have to drive it here from Boulder which is about 30 miles away-ish. So I guess what we're gonna do then is just floor it there's nothing else to it so in three two one floor oh takes off pretty well 40 50 60 there hey that was actually really pretty good zero to 60 in 4.69 that was not bad at all that was a good result so tommy in regular ride height the porsche is faster but in ultra low the model x is faster that's exactly right but how much do they cost so we bought the model x a few months back for eighty seven thousand dollars brand new and we just bought that cayenne turbo 
used of course for $22,000. So if you're looking performance per dollar in a performance crossover, obviously the Cayenne's better. However, big question is which one is going to be quicker around our racetrack? Yeah, that is definitely a question for Paul, our race car driver, to answer. So come on back next time when we give the keys to both cars to Paul and see, you know, if the Tesla is indeed the king of the track or if Porsche still rules the roost. As always, this is Roman. And Tommy, head over to TFLcar.com for the latest and greatest in news, views, and of course, electric car versus piston reviews. See you guys next time. Ciao.